This is an Illuminati building. Hello everybody, nice to see you again. I am overwhelmed by the positive comments on my videos. This tiny bit, no, actually I'm very overwhelmed. Such positivity I did not experience since my 14th divorce. So in all honesty, I can't thank you enough. So let me tell you about today's video. It will be a contact reference video. Why? will attempt to solve a problem. I noticed that the audience of this uh, channel might come from different contact skill levels. Some of you might be advanced users, some of you might be starting out, and some of you might even contemplate building your own instruments. In order to level the playing field, this video is aimed to give you an overview of contact. So if you are coming back from a future or past video and you're wondering what that part of contact was when I mentioned in my videos, then I can always refer you back to this video to get some context into the overall architecture of contact. All right, so let's look at contact. So here we are in contact. Although for this video, I'm primarily interested in the sampling engine, let me give you a brief overview of the interface. To the left, you have the browser panel. This panel has five tabs. In the libraries tab, you can see your purchased commercial libraries encoded by native instruments, where you can easily drop an instrument and load it in contact. The next tab is the files tab. This is the most important for our purposes. In this tab, you can navigate through your storage drives to find the folders and samples that you need for building your instrument. Be organized, do as I say and not as I do. In the database tab, you can search for sounds and instruments. The expert tab will be using to modify certain aspects of the sampling engine and we'll be using the automation tab to make our lives easier when we work with modulation in future videos. But for now, let's go back to the files tab here called excitement and let's audition our samples. I'm very excited today to be. Hi there, Paul Thompson here from. Sp I'm very excited today to. Imposter syndrome. Right. So at the top of the interface, we have the menus for uh, creating, loading, saving, and also general instrument settings for the purpose of this video we don't need to go into uh, into the details of this and i have here the panels window where i can activate or inactivate different panels of contact for example i like to have this master strip here activated where i can use the tuning fork to figure out and fine tune the pitch of my samples and this is a very brief overview of just the interface of contact. But now let's move to the all important sampling engine. To be showing you the imposter syndrome. Right. So there are a couple of ways to start a new instrument. My favorite way is to double click in this empty area. Here you can see and change general information about the instrument. For example, the output and MIDI channels, the number of uh, polyphony, uh, you can see how much memory the instrument consumes and you can regulate the overall tuning, panning and volume. Importantly, you have this icon here, the ranch icon, that most people are afraid of. When you click this ranch icon, you enter the sampling engine where the magic happens. Let me just close these windows to minimize, the, simplify the architecture of the sampling engine. On the top here, you have five buttons and these open different sections of the sampling engine. Let's start with the mapping editor. Clicking the mapping editor will open this grid. You can optionally click this arrow here to pop out the mapping editor if that fits your workflow. But when it comes to the mapping editor, I prefer to have it embedded in the sampling engine. Here you can map your samples along the x-axis on the keys and at different velocity levels along the y-axis. When I play on this tiny keyboard, you can visualize the velocity I'm playing with, with this red line. The harder I play, the higher the red line. And the softer I play, the lower the red line. Now we are ready to drop a sample on the key of our choice. Let's take this sample, for example. I'm very excited today to be showing... I'll drop it on C3. If I play C3 here... I'm very excited. I'm very excited. I'm very excited. I'm very excited. I'm very, I'm very, I'm very excited. Now, when you drop a sample on the mapping editor, this is called one zone. And I can do several things. I can extend the range, 
the key range. I'm very excited. I'm very excited. I'm very excited today to be sure. And I can also regulate at what velocity it plays. So if I hit hard, it won't play because it's outside the mapped velocity range. But if I play slow, I'm very excited today to be showing you the. So like this, I could drop another zone. Imposter syndrome. Where I can also regulate at what velocity it plays. And now if I play soft, I get I'm very excited today to be showing you I play hard. Imposter syndrome. I can also move the different zone on different set of keys so I can play. I'm very excited. Imposter I'm very excited. Imposter As you can see, I can play different samples or zones. I will use the term samples and zones interchangeably on different keys or even at different velocities. There are a lot of other things you can do in the mapping editor, but for the purposes of this video, it suffices to know these basic functions. Now let's move to the wave editor. This is one of the editors that I prefer to have it popped up. So if I click the wave editor, it activates this window here. My workflow, I prefer to have it floating around, but for recording this video, I will keep it incorporated in the sampling engine. In the wave editor, we can edit different aspects of our uh, sample. So if I click on the sample that I dropped in, we can change different properties. We can change the start. I'm very excited. I'm very excited. Excited, 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 excited today. We can regulate the end. We can create loops by activating a loop here, for example, and excited, 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 excited. We can chop our sample in the sync slice tab, introduce zone envelopes in this tab, and we can even change the wave file itself. Select our sample and normalize the wave file. So we map our samples into zones in the mapping editor and we change some of their properties in the wave editor. Now it's a good time to learn about the group editor. The group editor might appear to be boring but it is central to good instrument building. Let me activate the group by pressing this group editor button and you see this window. Currently, we only have one group. What is a group? Let's define a group. In the context of contact, a group is a whole set of samples that live within one instance of a mapping editor. You can think of groups as little folders where you can organize your samples that you want to treat similarly. Let me create a new group and name it to group two. Let me remove this sample from our group one. I will inactivate edit all groups so we can edit each group separately. I'll activate the group solo and also select groups only. Now you see my group two is empty and I can drop a sample in my group two. So as I switch groups, you see that they contain different samples. So if I play group one, I'm very excited today to play group two, imposter syndrome. Right, and we can also map the range. Imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome. Right, so you can then process the different groups in different ways, as we'll see shortly. But you can also do other interesting things in the group editor. Uh, one thing we'll be learning in future videos is to create probabilistic instruments. Um, let me give you a very simple example. Now, if I inactivate the group solo and I play a key, both groups will play at the same time. I'm very Imposter excited syndrome. today. To I'm very excited syndrome. today. To Say that I want either one or the other group playing randomly, but with an overall probability of 50%. I can achieve this by changing the group start options to cycle randomly. I first select group one and here the group start options I input to cycle randomly. Then I can click on group two and also select cycle randomly. Now, if I I'm very excited today. To I'm very excited today to be imposter syndrome, imposter syndrome, imposter, 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 imposter. I'm very excited today to be showing. So now every time I play the key, each group has 50% chance of being heard, but it's random. And this is one way of introducing slight controlled unpredictability in your instrument. So we use groups to differentially treat our samples, layer them, and introduce organic randomness by defining different start conditions for each group.
Now, we can also define start conditions for our groups in the script editor. However, let's have a little talk about the script editor. So, about scripting. Let me explain something to you uh, about uh, scripting. Although I am a relatively self-confident person, I realize that perhaps some of my videos, let me put this here, might be watched by some demigods of scripting. And although I'm self-confident, I have some limits. So when it comes to scripting, we can make a deal. I'll show you enough scripting to script uh, your own knobs and sliders and creative scripting, as long as it serves the purpose of the instruments that we built. Is that a deal? All right, let's go back. So we're back. By the way, this is where the script editor is. Magic. And honorable mention, the instrument options, which are general options, are not going to be concerned with now. So are you ready for the next one? Here you have the source module. Here we can change the playback properties of our samples within a group. Not only can we change the overall tuning of our samples and how they are streamed from the storage device, we can also change the playback algorithm. Check this out. If I set this to tone machine, I'm very excited today. I'm very excited today. Very excited. I'm very excited today. And if you combine this with the legato, it allows us to play Paul as if he's so excited. I'm very excited today to be showing you the latest of our film scoring selections. I'm very excited today to be showing you the latest of our film scoring selections. I'm very excited today to be showing you the latest of our film scoring selections. I'm very excited today to be showing you the latest of our film scoring selections. We'll be using the undercover powers of the source module to save resources and streamline our instrument design. Group effects. We can apply different effects, different groups. For example, I apply distortion to group one. Imposter syndrome. But the group two is unaffected. Each effect comes with its own controls. You might notice that you cannot see reverb here, but we'll solve that problem in a few seconds. And now let's move to the amplifier module. Guess what this part of contact does? Here we can regulate the volume of the samples in each group. We'll return to this module when we finish off this overview with modulation in contact. Here you have the instrument buses and the routing, but we'll not deal with this part of contact in this video. And now the effects. Here you have insert effects, send effects, and the main effects. The main effects are the instrument effects that are used to um, gel together the instrument as a whole. The send effects are effects where we can send different groups to different extent through. For example, if I add here a reverb, go to my group effects and I add a send levels. Now you can see that I can use this knob here to regulate how much reverb is applied to group one, or in other words, how much of group one goes via the scent effect here, the reverb. I'm very excited. I'm very excited. I'm very excited. I'm very excited. I'm very excited today to be showing you the latest of our film scoring selections. I'm very excited today to be showing you the latest of our film scoring selections. But the other group has no reverb. Imposter syndrome. I wonder how this will sound with some reverb. So we can use the send effects to differentially apply effects to our groups. And finally, the powerful aspect of modulation in contact. Ready? What is modulation chromo? I'm glad you asked. In my simple brain, 
Modulation is an iterative relationship between two parameters. In the context of contact is one parameter modulating another parameter. So let's take volume as an example. Here in the amplifier section, actually in most of the sections in contact, you find this little button called mod. This is where you can regulate any modulation that can possibly be applied to the various parameters, but not all parameters can be modulated. So let's take the amplifier module as an example. If I click this modulation, there are no modulators right now. I want to choose velocity to modulate what? The volume. And this slider tells me to what extent. So if I play softly, and if I play hard, now a better way to see how velocity affects the volume is by clicking this button here and then activating this curve. On the x-axis you have velocity and on the y-axis you have the volume. So as the velocity increases, the volume increases. I want the velocity to have less effect at low velocities but higher effect at higher velocities. I can change the nature of the curve. Using the modulation curves we can fine-tune how our modulator affects the parameter, in this case volume. Let's say I want to modulate my tuning. I can either click on tuning and select a modulator or I can come to my modulation button and add an LFO. Let's go for a sine wave. Now I added LFO, regulating what? The pitch. I want to see the curve now. So this is the curve. But where is the LFO? If we click this button, it takes us down to the modulation tab. And you see the pitch is being modulated by this LFO here. If I change the speed, the frequency of this sine wave, we alter the speed by which the pitch is modulated. And if I increase now the percent of modulation, this will affect by how much the pitch is modulated. And if you look at this light here, you can see how the tuning of the group is modulated. And if I lower the frequency, right, so you get the point, right? Now, different parameters within contact can be modulated, like the tune and the volume, and also some aspects of the effects, but not all parameters can be modulated. And we'll explore modulation to create simple but complex instruments. Now, let me tell you what I wished contact could do more. They would like to see more modulators and at different places. In my profession, I work with the most complex systems in the world. I know, I can hardly discover what a Discord server is, but I will, I will. In these complex systems, if we don't simplify, they can drive you mad, as you can see. We intellectualize and reduce the complex systems into a few positive and negative feedback loops. I would like to see that sort of organic modulation in contact. A modulation where the properties of one sample can modulate properties of another sample. Hmm. Now, like any other skill in life, if you want to express yourself properly, you need to get the technical aspect down so that when you have a vision in your head, you're able to translate that vision on paper really fast. And in order to do that, you need to practice the different steps. Mapping editor, wave editor, group editor, group effects, insert effects, send effects, instrument effects and modulation. Practice, practice, practice so that you can have everything in context. In the meantime, ooh, this is a nice place for a recording, right? Look at this. I like this. So in the meantime, be happy and make other people happy too. Till next time.